This is your main man, King Size, a.k.a. Sizzle, welcoming you to another kingdom building conversation where we put Christ on display through those serving him in the culture. In this episode, I am pleased to welcome into the virtual building, Reese Lachey. Hey. I want I want to do the you know the whole the you know because it's loud be all, yeah. <laughs> Real quick for those that don't know, Reese Lachey is a Christian hip hop artist born and raised in Louisiana. In her own words, she says, "Who I am is based. Uh, I'm sorry, being grounded in who God says I am. I chose to be who in the likeness of Him. That's the agenda. My music is full of passion, love, and inspiration." I inspire and excel my passion and life into others, Woo! completely go, letting go in the hopes that it inspires someone to follow. I'm not talking about jumping off a bridge, though the fear of being free is as if you're being asked to jump. I'm simply here to encourage you to be free. Welcome, Reese. Glad to have you. Um, it's definitely taking us some time to um, finally connect um, via the, this uh, virtual platform. Uh, however, it's all been worth it. Uh, so definitely thank you, Reese, for taking this time to join me today. Um, let me start off by uh, saying that you are definitely a grinder uh, when it comes to putting out new music uh, and in turn supporting those songs with dope visuals. I mean, that that is the formula. And I think that a lot of artists uh, need to, to, to take heed and, and, and follow that blueprint that you're laying, uh, because a lot of times you hear music and it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Uh, and I think what really helps you stand out is the fact that you have something to support uh, the words that you speak, because sometimes it may take that visual for them to get a hold of who you are. And then they'll get back, they'll hear the beat and then they'll go back and say, wait, oh, wait, did you hear what she was saying? So it, it's it's all a part of the formula and, and you're definitely mastering that beautifully. Uh, I know what it takes to do that. And honestly, it goes unnoticed. Um, and as a, a consumer, we just you know want the finished product. Uh, and not uh, once do we consider what it takes for the artist to, you know, get said product to them. Uh, and in between, uh, you know, you dropping content of some sort uh, on social media just to keep everybody interested, uh, because it's definitely different um, nowadays. And you're doing a, a fine job navigating uh, through that minefield. So, you know, kudos to you. Uh, personally, I love witnessing your evolution. Uh, as well as your elevation in such a short period of time. So uh, it's quite refreshing and inspiring to me, an OG like myself. <laughs> so once again, all that to say, welcome. Glad to have you. Um, mm -hmm. We're definitely going to get into this. Um, now, you know, anyone that, you know, kind of follows you, well, not kind of, that follows you. Uh, <laughs> this is something that kind of tickled me uh, a few days ago where you actually, I'm sorry, yesterday, where you dropped the new music video, Know Me. Uh -huh. However, it was supposed to drop today. Uh huh. Okay, now you told your followers, you said uh, that you changed the date because you were, and I quote, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was yes. hollering. Yes. <laughs> now I have to hear the story uh, behind that and so much more, but first, okay. we're gonna take a hard left real quick. Okay. All right, so we're gonna have a segment called The Lightning Round. Oh my God. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I mean, just on the spot. Ooh. Just give me the answer. Don't think too heavy on it because I know how we get as MCs. You know, we just like, hmm. No, I don't need you to give me comment. I don't need you to get all deep on me. No, no. I said, I'm kind of slow. So you, uh, you got to, nah. <laughs> <laughs> she said I'm kind of slow. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's, I'm just going to throw out some questions. Uh, it'll be good ones. Like, you know, it'll probably catch you. Uh, make you think for a second. I, I'll give you a couple seconds. I, I'm going to be too you know, critical on it. All right. So favorite MC all time. Ah, uh, Lauren Hill. Love it. What is the first item on your bucket list? I don't have a bucket list. You don't have a bucket? What? No, I don't have a bucket list. No bucket list. No bucket list. Oh no, we're gonna have to follow up. We're gonna have to follow up and develop a bucket list. I'm going. I'm going to be on your social media platform. Like we need to get Reese a bucket I'm list. I'm basic. No, no, I'm no, no. Basic. Listen, your heavenly father got a whole big vast <laughs> world. There's so much stuff out there. No, we're gonna talk about that bucket list. We'll save it for a later time. Okay. All right. If a movie was made on your life, Ooh. what genre would it be, and who would play you? Oh, that'll be like a, like a sad comedy. Okay. I okay. Yeah. Um who will play me? Dang, I need a couple different 
All right, give, all right give, me, give me a couple. Give me a couple. Who you think? All right. So, so in the first half, we could say we could use, um, I don't know. It's hard because, like, I came out of homosexuality. Okay. Okay. So it's like, you know, on this end, it's like, uh, but then gotcha. you got to gotcha. switch the role. So that's, that's hard. That's dope. And for, first of all, thank you for even saying that because yeah. I, I think that transparency is needed. I know we got the lightning round, but that just caught me. And I think that's beautiful. That's a part of your story. And that's so dope. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. All right. Stop playing. Favorite, co <laughs> <laughs> Favorite kung fu flick? I don't watch kung Um. Ooh. Ooh. I like Karate Kid, but do that count? I don't watch that'll Kung be, Fu. That'll be acceptable. I, that, I think uh, I'm gonna you be can't, like, can't as an MC. I, no, as an MC, you can never say that. Don't even say. Mm -mm. I like. I mean, this is not Kung Fu, but I like the Wu Tang series that they. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Well, well, that's exactly because I was going to refer to that. I was going to say, wait a minute, hold on. Let's do our hip hop history. Oh, here. I love that. I love. Okay, the all right, all right, cool. You safe? I was going. I was going to say, hold on. Yeah. I done said all this stuff in the beginning. You said and you don't came here. But I'm thinking like. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, as long as they say he, ah. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> favorite verse of scripture? I'm going to just say John 3 16. Okay. All right. Oh, you, you want me to tell you why? Go ahead. Tell me why. Um, dang, it's a long story. This is the lightning round. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. All right. Okay. Most useless talent that you have? Dang, what? <laughs> I use all my talents. You ain't catching me like that. All right. I'm, I'm using all my talents. <laughs> all right. Okay. If you were, let's see, what's your favorite book growing up? I just told you I'm slow. You ain't you are you're not okay, slow. I, mean, I did the I did, I don't I don't I didn't read. What, what book did you remember? None. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being so honest. None. Like this lightning round ain't working for me because Oh, listen, we, 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 you're going to redeem yourself. I, I have confidence in you. Your favorite board game? Checkers. I used to love checkers as a kid. Okay. I told you, you redeem yourself. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie? I'm Ratchet. Go ahead. Go Listen, are we waiting? Can I say it? Go ahead. I love Paid in Full. Okay. But but again, <laughs> if you're a hip-hop head, that, that's a part of your history. <laughs> yeah. So you safe. Okay. Hey, this is judgment-free zone here. All right. Uh, favorite video game? The original Mario, the old, old, the 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 first Nintendo Mario. How long? How long did it? How long did it take you to beat it? Mm, that I was like six when I beat that game. Dope, yeah. Dope. Okay. Yeah, I don't. It didn't take long. Okay. All right. Now you said your favorite MC is Lauren Hill. Right. Who inspired you to be an MC? Lil mm -hmm. Boosie. Okay. <laughs> I'm ratchet, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I told you this was gonna be fun. I told you it was gonna be fun. All right. Um, if you could open up uh, a show for any artist, who would it be? Jay Z. Okay. All right. Well, why? He has the biggest platform. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a safe answer. I got you. As in in hip hop, he has the biggest platform in hip hop. I'll tell you one thing. I I, I pick his brain on business too. That that'd be uh, you know not only minister. But I pick his brain on business too. But that's that's for another conversation. Um, do you sing in the shower? Yes. Okay. Give me a song that you 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 commonly sing in the shower. Like, what's the most you sing the most? For your all on me, let it fall down. That's the one. From the top of my head. Yep, that's it. Dope. I love it. I love it. What is the best advice you've been given? See, this one is hard because I know the person who gave the advice, but I wrote it in my notes and it's hard to explain. Okay. He said, he said, if you focus on the why, mm. why you're doing it mm. instead of what you're doing, what you're, why, what you want to get out of it, mm. it, gives you more of a purpose. And Ace told me that. Ace Harris, he said, focus more on the why. Okay. So let me, let me follow that up. I know it's a lightning round, but let me ask you this. What's your why? My why is because 
as a kid, like I'm saying, I'm telling you, Boosie, Lil Boosie mm -hmm. inspired me to do music. And where I come from, um, that's all I knew. Okay. All I knew was hearing, if you saw someone successful, it was because they were a rapper, they were a drug dealer, they mm -hmm. were any anything in, inside of that. And um, I want to show people that you can do something different mm -hmm. and be successful. Like you don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to, right. you know, go the street route. There's there's mm -hmm. other routes. Mm -hmm. And I just I want to do that. I want to show people that there's there's another way. Okay. Well, matter of fact, you know what? I, I think the way you answered that question, we I. I, I Lightning round over. I just feel okay. like, you know, this is a moment where I, I felt a shift. This is me personally. Um, where are you from? I'm from Louisiana. Okay. Okay. So you, you kind of gave some insight on, you know, that particular, you know, your why. So tell me about your childhood. How was your childhood? Oh, my God. Uh, so first I'm going to say I started writing when I was like 10. Okay. Why I started writing? I started writing because I, it was an outlet for me. Okay. So I started, I started out, I remember writing, I hate my mom on a piece mm. of paper. Okay. And, and then <clears throat> every time something happened, I started to like make it rhyme. Mm. Um, and, <clears throat> and then I just, I started rapping, but I a lot. I'll say, okay, okay. So I am just now getting to the point where I am putting these things out in my music. Um, like people need to know, like as a kid, as a kid, I didn't believe in God because mm. I didn't understand why me, why, like you know the why me. Syndrome. Right, why right, me? right, right. I'm mm -hmm. why am I eight years old? I haven't done mm -hmm. anything. I'm I'm a good person. I'm a mm -hmm. kid. I don't deserve this. Why do I have to? Uh, me, my sisters and brothers. Sometimes we had to like knock on our neighbor's door to ask mm -hmm. if we can take a bath. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel, and that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. As a kid, mm -hmm. that's embarrassing. Of course, of especially course. and they had kids too. Mm -hmm. And and you mm -hmm. know how kids are. Why are they always coming over here to take a bath? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and um, like I remember um, times where my mom would send us off. For me, I would go to my uncle, and me and me and my brother and sister, we all had different dads. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. my mom. I remember um, being in school. I got called to the office mm -hmm. during during class, and when I got there, it was CPS, mm -hmm. and she was asking me all these questions. What not? This sounds it, it might not sound too deep, but when I got home, my bag was already packed. Mm -hmm. Like my mom had already set us mm -hmm. up. Like, all right, you go here, you go here, you mm -hmm. go there. And that, I mean, and, and and you say it's not it may not be deep to us, but in all honesty, that could be very traumatic for a child. It was, and, and, and that definitely can set you on a, a, a an unexpected path. Mm -hmm. um, and and you you, wow. So you know that kind of leads me to you know what something you can remember that changed your life. Was it that moment, or was it something else? Changed my life for the better, like giving my life to Christ. Well, actually, let, let, let's go back. Uh, let's because, of course, you start as a, as a child. You're thinking, you know, you have this vast, this big world out out there, and it's like, you know, the 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 Disney, you know, idea or thought, like, oh, it's just such a magical world. Mm -hmm. But then there are certain things that happen in life that takes you away from, you know, that imagination as a child, that 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 dream state, that you know, that creativity in a sense. Uh, where it can naturally grow uh, from inspiration as opposed to trauma, you know, and, and, and creativity birth through trauma can be a lot different than, and, and again, it comes out in the music, you know, like, like you say, when, when you're going through uh, painful situations or um, certain life changes, mm -hmm. then it's going to change the direction in which you create. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess in, in this sense, you know, 
you talk about as a child that those first experiences there, Mm -hmm. you know, how did that impact, you know, your, your, say your teenage years? Mm -hmm. It definitely gave me, I was reckless as a teenager. Um, I was very nonchalant Mm -hmm. um, about everything. Um, And when, as a child and you're dealing with adults, Mm -hmm. this is crazy because I actually like God is dealing with me on this right now where uh, about a month ago I had a dream that Kevin Gates was about dream, but he was arguing with me and I was a child Mm. and he was yelling over me, but he wouldn't let me speak. So I got like upset Mm. and I started crying, but my mom comes in and she takes his side and I'm trying to explain to her Mm. like what is happening. Okay. Like you're, you're not right in the situation. And as I'm trying to talk to my mom, she just like, shut, like, shut, like me, shut up. Mm-hmm. And I got, I remember getting angry and I threw something at her. Okay. In the okay. dream, I threw something mm-hmm. at her because I was angry. Mm-hmm. Let mm-hmm. me speak. And, um, and so as a teenager, I'm just, I just had this dream like a month ago, man. Okay. Okay. And like, God was showing me, this is you. Mm-hmm. This, oh, well, well, this is why. You, mm-hmm. you, you treat situations the way you do now. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to argue. I don't want to talk. I'm mm-hmm. very nonchalant when it comes to like arguments and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm so nonchalant. It, whatever you say. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, sometimes that's not good. Right. Because right. you're not, you're not telling, you, you're not tell you're not getting right. out what you yeah. need to get out. Mm-hmm. And it's not good. Like I, I went through a lot of situations as a, I remember, and I, I, this is just an explanation. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. a example, um, my basketball coach, I play AAU. This man created mm-hmm. a basketball team around me. Okay. Um, yeah. he, he was also my, my goddad, but he, um, he had money okay. and my mom sent me to live with him and mm-hmm. his wife and his son. And, um, I have a cousin who, that we like this. We were like this all mm-hmm. our lives. We went through the same things. He slept mm-hmm. on my floor with me. Okay. Then, so we sitting mm-hmm. at the lunch table and um, at the time I'm living with my basketball coach. Mm-hmm. We sit at the lunch table and my god brother says something to my cousin and they mm-hmm. exchange words. Okay. And I just sat there. I'm not saying nothing. This is my, mm-hmm. this, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I live mm-hmm. with you, but this is my, like, Right. We struggle together. Right. Got you. But I'm not saying gotcha. nothing. Right. So I get back to, to home where I was living with them and, mm-hmm. you know, his parents were waiting and they, they, they want to talk. They want to talk. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he went home and told his parents that I didn't defend him. And this is a big dude. He played football. Okay. Okay. So okay. he went home and told his parents that I didn't defend him and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And I sat there like this. I, I just sat there. Like the whole time you, you know what I'm saying? I just sat mm-hmm. there. It's didn't nothing. chime in, didn't chime in didn't with even, anything. I didn't even mm-hmm. explain. That, that's mm-hmm. none of my business. Right. I right. didn't tell them. I didn't tell them that. That's That ain't none of my business. Right. I didn't tell them that he sleep on, he sleep on the floor with me. Mm-hmm. This my, mm-hmm. this is my dog. Like we, we struggle together. Mm-hmm. I can't get in that. Right. I couldn't say all that because I'm, mm-hmm. I was so used to being shut up. Mm-hmm. So and and my entire life I've been doing it. Just shut up. Okay. When when did you okay and, and, and hearing that? Me. Yeah, I was gonna say that because in, in many instances, um for those that aren't are unable to express verbally, um, there has to be an outlet somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand that that dynamic. Um, that shift when you, when you found that outlet, and let me ask you this, and, and, and just from, you know, MC to MC as writer to writer, Christian to Christian, did you find that when you use that outlet to write that God spoke to you in that process, or was it just, you let, let the words out and it was just words at that point? No, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times. Um, I realized that God was speaking through me, but it wasn't mm-hmm. until after 
I put it down and I record it and I start Mm -hmm. listening to it and I'm Mm -hmm. crying and I'm like, (gasps) yeah, yep. (laughs) You know, you know, that's, that's, that's to me, that's how dope God is. Um, We talk about how amazing, oh, you know, we look at God as far as, you know, being a provider, you know, shelter, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we expect the word to come from strictly from a preacher or a prophet, you know, but in all actuality, God is so dope that he'll use the gift he gives you. And it's like, okay, if you can't hear me that way, I'm going to take whatever you say. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, it's almost like it's unbeknownst to you that the song isn't necessarily for the people. It's for you. And it's like, I'm going to talk to you through the words that you write. Like I, I, I can't tell you how many times I personally sat there and wrote lyrics. And it's like, yo, this is not, this is not meant for me to put out as a single. It's ain't meant for me to put on an album. This is just, you you really talking to me right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you snotting and crying like, oh God, you real. You know what I mean? It's all that, that yeah. stuff. So but I, I, I definitely, you know, I can, I can definitely agree. I understand that dynamic. Um, but I, I, I thank you for being so transparent um, as far as your experience is concerned, because there are so many that have been shut up you know, have, have, have been told, you know, don't speak, stay in your place. Um, and, and <clears throat> they suppress, you know, whatever they're feeling for so many years and not having that ability to speak, it impacts in, in many instances life, you know, mm-hmm. as far as how we, you know, interact with each other, you know, uh, you know, pre pandemic. Uh, but it, it's, it helps when you do have that outlet to speak. And I, I thank God that you found the ability to write so that you did have an outlet because of course it could have gone crazy left uh, with, with, with uh, you know, what you had experienced uh, mm-hmm. in life so far. So all that you were going through as far as that process is concerned, who was someone that had a positive effect on you in your life? My grandmother. Okay. My grandmother, my grandmother was saved, okay. like for real, like to the she, bone. <laughs> but, but but the problem was, the problem was, this was the problem. This is what hurt me because she was there in the beginning of my life. Um, like even when my dad wasn't, I didn't meet my dad. Mm. I didn't, I didn't, I knew my grandma, but I ain't know my dad for a while. Mm. Um, because he lived in Texas, but my grandmother was here in Louisiana. Okay. But um, so I grew up. Like this, my other mama, you know what I'm saying? And and she was this just this sweet lady. Like she taught me trust. I can remember I'm like two or three years old and she's washing my hair and I'm crying. And she's like, you can trust me just like that. You can trust me. And I, I, I learned at that moment what trust was. But so, my, so my aunt went to the military and this is, this is, I'll um, explain how I ended up in DC and Virginia. Um, my aunt went to the military and then uh, she got into a bad accident and then she was working at the Pentagon. The Pentagon blew up. So my grandmother moved there okay. to, to be like near her, her daughter. Mm-hmm. And when she left, that broke me because I okay. didn't have that anymore. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that place that I can go to, to, to feel peace. Okay. Or to feel like a child. I felt like a child when I was with her. Mm-hmm. I can remember, I can remember I had a basketball game on Saturday. And Friday, Friday morning, I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning crying because I didn't wash my, my jersey. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. I was like 10 years old and I knew that was my responsibility. Mm-hmm. I need to mm-hmm. wash my jersey. So when I woke mm-hmm. up and I looked up and she had it hanging up on a hanger mm-hmm. already yeah, ready love, yep. for me. And I was mm-hmm. like. Got you. Got you. So, so she was that, yeah, she was that outlet. She was that, she was that place that not just me, like a lot of other people in my family, we can go and be kids, you okay. know, be love, be free. You know? it, it sounds like she brought about that balance with you because I, I feel based on the examples that you've given so far, it's almost like, you, you know, again, you have these traumatic experiences to begin with and it shifted you mentally, uh, emotionally. Um, in some cases, you know, it impacts people physically. You know, they get sick uh, because of, of of all the things that they're suppressing mm-hmm. and not having that outlet. But then, you know, 
you have that ability. Again, life in certain instances for certain people may, you know, cause them to, to grow up a lot faster yeah. than what they're, they're, they're supposed to. Because, of course, you know, ideally you would want a, a child to remain a child, you yeah. know, until you get to, you know, 17, 18, 18 years old and, you know, you're legal as mm-hmm. far as that's concerned. But, of course, people, you know, take that's a different story. But um, she brought about that balance and allowed, you know, certain portions of you to develop uh, in the process. So, you know, now I know, you know, you said, you know, your, your grandmother had the, the positive effect on you. Now, throughout your life experiences, what truly inspires you? Like from what you've experienced from, you know, traumatic experience to, you know, then with your, your grandmother and finding that balance, what have you learned over time that truly inspires you? I'm, I really don't want to answer this question wrong, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be basic and just say like the music, the okay. music keeps me going. Okay. If I didn't have, man, if I didn't have me, if I didn't have that outlet, I would have, mm. I would have backslid a long time. I would be back in the world because mm. I wouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I like, I, I know that God gave me that. I know mm. God gave me that to keep me and right. it does, it keeps me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I can attest to that too. Uh, that makes perfect sense for me. Um, not only being inspired by it, but again, it keeps you going. So that, that's, that's beautiful. It's, it's not basic. And I think it's basic to people that don't understand this world of music, mm-hmm. because if we, we look at life, any kind of uh, major event, um, major crisis, uh, it's always like an error is always defined by a song or mm-hmm. something that happened in that time, uh, time frame. Um, so definitely, you know, I, that resonates, you know, with me. Um, so I know you mentioned, you know, Lauren Hill earlier, uh, and the, uh, you know, you talked about Boosie, but at this point, you know, on your journey currently, what artist inspires you as of now? Um, I love Todd Delaney. Okay. Ja'Kayla okay. Carr too. Ja'Kayla, I, I really love her. Ja'Kayla okay. Carr, man. She, she deep. <laughs> she said she deep. <laughs> I love it. Cause it, it's like layers to that. I heard like, as far as you, how you developed as a writer through the experiences and things of that nature, but what it, was it that those experiences that got you into music or did someone introduce you to music and put you on to somebody and say, okay, this is, Oh, I definitely want to go down this path. Uh, no, it was definitely just there. It was, it was all around me. It was all around me. Just an um, organic, organic, you know, just yeah, process yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Uh, how long have you been doing music personally? Ooh, I started doing secular I started out secular. I was 16 when I recorded my first song. Okay. So that was like, I'll tell you how many years ago, but I was 16. (laughs) I was 16. Don't don't get, don't get me started. uh, Trust me. You know, you probably, you're not supposed to ask a woman her age. I'm not going to do that. But all I'm going to say is that. I like saying my age though. Okay. Well, go ahead. Let the people know. I know I don't look it. So it's like. I'm um, in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. But go ahead. Yeah, so that was like 13 years ago. Okay. See, I, I wish 20, I could say it was 13. I wish I could say it was 13 years ago for me. 25, 30. Like, no. uh, no, you, you. <laughs> Honestly, we up we up there. Um, let's see. Were you brought up in the church? If yes, describe that. I don't even know how to answer that. Uh, I went to church with my grandma on Sunday okay. sometimes. Okay. Um, I went to church with my mom. Like my mom went to church sometimes too. But when we got in that to that age where like I have an older mm-hmm. sister, so when she got to that age where it was like I don't, we don't, we not going, no, then we ain't going. And my mom, like she not, she not saved, but like you know mm-hmm. she go to church though. Got you. Got you. And, 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 and that makes sense. I, I think that's a similar story uh, for many, you know, young people. If if that is not 
because of course when you're dragged to do something and it doesn't impact you that way, it's almost going to be like, oh, it's a chore Mm -hmm. as opposed to it being something that's, that's life changing. Um, You know, so, you know, I I know I have a separate question I was going to ask, but when did it like become, you know, important for you in that, in that, you know, that as far as going to church or matter of fact, um, was there something that drew you to Christ? And if so, what was that? Um, I went to East. I went to church one Easter. I was one of those. Okay. Um, I went to church one Easter. Um, I was 20, uh, 20, 20. Okay. And I hadn't been to church in like eight years. Okay. Okay. And, or probably more, but I went and I felt something. Okay. I can't describe it, but I felt, I I felt the Holy Spirit. Okay. And from there, it just, it was like, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I went to church on Easter because like, that's what you're supposed to do. (laughs) Tell them, (laughs) tell them again. Tell tell the people in the back. (laughs) But, but, and not knowing that like, this one decision changed the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. That one choice I made to go to church changed my entire life. Now, after that 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 experience, what what did you notice? You know, when you say it changed your life, you know, was it more of a? Because there are some people that it's just like they just drop everything. It's like, okay, I'm just I'm a, I'm saved. Or was it like a gradual growing process, or was it like you know how how was your journey as far as in, into? giving your life to Christ and, and then, uh, you know, immediately following what was the experience like for you so as a was, new convert? Yeah, it was, it was very fa- Like it, everything happened really fast, but mm-hmm. it was, it was set up perfect. Like he did it. Like he did that. Um, because, <laughs> and if you don't mind me sharing, um, sure. like my testimony, um, like I said, I was a homosexual, um, mm-hmm. That one day I chose to go to church, I met a woman. Okay. Came up to me. She asked me why I didn't go to the altar. And I was like, oh, no, I'm good. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. this was after church. And she took my number. She thought I was a boy, by the way. Okay. I okay. Was a boy. She took my number. Um, and then she started to, you know, encourage me and stuff like that. She one day asked me, what is God going to think or what is what do I think God is gonna say when He returns? And I look like a boy. And I said, mm. "What?" I was like, "What? Like this is me. This is how I am." Oh, let me rewind because I almost got in an accident and all kind of stuff. Mm. I'm gonna rewind. I I, mm. I went. I, dang, this is long. This story is too long. But I went. I was going to work. I was going mm. to work one morning, mm. and I was high. I ain't gonna lie. I was high, <laughs> and um, it was raining. And as I'm driving, I put on my 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 signal to get into the left lane. And when I did, I heard a beep, and I tried to hurry up and you know mm-hmm. swerve back to the right. And when mm-hmm. I did that, I started spinning in the middle of the road. I was okay. spinning in the middle of the mm-hmm. road, mm-hmm. and um and I could just hear the. It was like everything got everything slowed down, and I could hear mm-hmm. the cars going pew pew. Mm-hmm. Past me, the, mm-hmm. all these cars passing me, pew pew, mm-hmm. like they were flying, and mm-hmm. and as I'm spinning, I'm like, I drop, I let go of the wheel, and I was like, God. And when I dropped my head, I said, God, and I dropped my head. I gave up. I just knew. I sh- I just mm-hmm. knew that I was about to mm-hmm. die, bro. Mm-hmm. I said, God. And when I looked up, I was on the side of the road, facing mm-hmm. the, the opposite direction. <sighs> And at that moment, I knew there is a God. Mm-hmm. I've spent all these years, mm-hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? I spent all these years trying to come up with a reason why there is no God. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. I knew it was mm-hmm. God. Yep. I knew it was him. I knew he placed me on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was actually after that where I started, when I, where I went to church. I was like, I'm going to go to church on Easter then. You know, <laughs> um, and then from there, it went. The lady asked me about homosexuality, and I'm like, Mm-mm, no, he loved me the way I am. It is what it mm-hmm. is. 
Mm-hmm. And then I ended up moving back to Louisiana. I read a scripture that said, my virgin daughter, you would not come to me as a man. Don't ask me where it's at. I ain't seen it after that. Mm-hmm. Um, my virgin daughter, you would not come to me as a man. Um, started telling all my family all these things that God was doing in my life. Mm-hmm. And everybody like, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like unbelievable almost. And mm-hmm. one day um, I decided I want, I'm want to get baptized. And my aunt told me, she was like, this was the dumbest thing I've heard at the time. At the time, this was dumb. But she was like, um, she was like, oh, let's go and find you a cute little outfit. Because at this point, I'm like telling everybody, like, I'm going to be a woman again. How you feel? Mm-hmm. So she was like, <laughs> she was, she was like we're going to get you a cute little outfit. Mm-hmm. When you get baptized, it's like, you can go down like a man. But when you come up, you look like a woman. And, and I was like, no. <laughs> no, one. I didn't have a job. I ain't had no mm. money. I ain't had. Mm. I moved. I went back to Louisiana with nothing. So I'm okay. like, no, I'm not. No, we're not doing that. Cause I would okay. I look like looking like a boy, and then for my baptism, and then tomorrow I got on boxers. You know what I'm saying? So no. I hear you. So she was like, nah, she was like, nah, 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 let's do it. Uh, I'm gonna pay. You could just pay me. I'm like, I ain't. I can't pay you back. And she was like, well, you could just clean my attic. And um. Um, she had been meaning to clean her attic because so, when she moved in, that house was uh, raided by, mm, the, uh, okay. by the by the cops. So the person mm. that lived there before that, him and his wife, he was a drug dealer. Mm, okay. Um, him okay. and his wife lived there, and um, the house got raided. They put it up for you know whatever, and she ended up moving in. But it was a lot of stuff mm. that you know they had to take care of themselves. They had to clean out the house. Mm. And one part that they didn't touch was the attic. She knew of stuff up there. Mm. She didn't know what it was. So I went up there. I was like, all right, whatever. So I went up in her attic and um, it was two huge bins. Mm. 50 gallon, you know, the 50 gallon mm. bins. Yes, I do. Yep. Full of, full of clothes. Mm. All my size. Mm. All my size tags still on them. But the crazy part, it was a wedding dress on top of it. So I had to move the wedding dress to get mm-hmm. to the bands. The symbolism. The symbolism is so dope. And, and, like, and you know, my <laughs> my entire family went crazy. Like, they, they mm-hmm. was trying to try on stuff, but it's, it's not for you, sis. Exactly. It's not for you. You a little too little or you a little too big. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not cause yep. It was like nobody was expecting it. You mm-hmm. knew it was something up there, but you ain't know it was sure. something up there from mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You didn't know that. You. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So somebody was going crazy, like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm telling, I'm like, I'm telling I've been telling y'all this. I've been telling y'all this. <laughs> all this stuff is happening. Mm-hmm. So um, and and when I got all the clothes, I was like, all right, all right, mm-hmm. I got you. I'm gonna do it then. Mm-hmm. And I did it. And you look back since. I ain't look back since. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. See, I, I I'm just I, I'm so like I I knew this was gonna be a dope interaction with you, <clears throat> and just kind of going off script, you know, it's it's amazing to me to to hear not only your testimony, but the opportunities. You know, h- how do you, you know. In, in in the world that we live in now, you know, we all, we we constantly see uh, the LGBT. You know, I, I may get the letters wrong, but that could, you know that agenda has been at the forefront of everything. Mm. And how do you handle ministry um, when that is at the forefront? And now you have a stance, you know, and you stand on on on, on the principles of Christianity. Mm-hmm. And 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 when you preach Christ or you rap about Christ, mm-hmm. um, how do you approach those that may have gone through the same journey or the experience that you had, you know, as far as homosexuality is concerned? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I haven't even really dug into it yet. Like maybe, okay. not. maybe he just, you know, he's still working in it, mm-hmm. but um, I try to be the, the few times that I have been able to speak about it. I, I'm the type of person, like, I try to be sensitive to mm-hmm. everyone's struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not the type of person that 
without knowing you. I just dropped a song called Know Me. Without yeah. knowing you. Oh, we're going to get to that. You come. Yeah, yourself. without knowing <laughs> you, um, come up to you and say, hey, like, you know, mm -hmm. I used to be gay, but God saved my life. Mm -hmm. He can save your life, too. Like, I'm not that type of person. Like, okay. I, I want to get close to you. Like, mm -hmm. I want to see... I want to see why you gay. I want to know why you gay. Okay. Okay. I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to know mm -hmm. why you chose that direction because, and I have a little, a little, a little, uh, thing I wrote down and it says, um, you can't pull a tree up by its roots mm -hmm. and expect it to be healthy. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. You can't pull a tree up by its mm -hmm. branches. I'm sorry. You branches. cannot pull a right. tree up right. by its mm -hmm. branches mm -hmm. and expect it to be healthy. Right. People who lie, mm -hmm. they know it's wrong. When I was gay, I knew, mm -hmm. even though I mm -hmm. kept saying, like, God ain't real, I knew it was wrong. Right, right. I don't need mm -hmm. nobody to tell me why it's wrong. I don't need nobody to tell me I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. You know, right. I, yeah, so, so. It took somebody having to get to the root, the why. Mm -hmm. People see how, lie, see how that circle, know. see how that comes back, see how that comes back. Mm -hmm. You know you lying. I don't have to tell you you lie. I don't have to go to somebody and say you lying. You a liar. I don't have to mm -hmm. do that. Yep. I want to know why you lying. Like, what is it? Are you afraid of the truth? Mm -hmm. Did you get a whooping every time you told the truth? See. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm that again. It goes, it, go, it goes back. It circles back to what we talked about that word trauma, and and there could have been experiences for them that you know caused them to 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 walk that path. Like you said, getting close because that's how the Holy Spirit drew us to Him. Mm -hmm. Like you you can't come to Christ unless you're you're drawn. Like you gotta. There's something that that pulls pulls at your your heart, your spirit, man. Like it's something that resonates and connects and it's mm -hmm. almost like hook line and sinker once he got you he got yeah. you yeah so let me ask you this as an artist uh what do you want to accomplish through your music um i just want as many people as many people as i can as many ears that that will listen to know that just because I'm a believer, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I can't relate to you. Gotcha. I yeah. want them to know that, like, because what I see a lot, especially now, is like, it's sometimes it, it's hard for people to relate to us. Mm -hmm. So they have no, I don't want, I don't want what you got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When people look at a believer, they're supposed to say, like, they're supposed to think, like, I want that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. I want people to look at me and say, I want what she has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's God. That's Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How do you feel the internet has impacted the music business? They say it's easier now, but like, I wish I could have came up in like the Wu-Tang era where like it seemed more easy back then. I don't know, but um, I don't know because I'm still trying to figure the internet out. Like I'm, one of my goals is actually 10 mil 2021. I keep saying that, keep but, speaking. um, but, um, I haven't figured it out. Okay. I'm still trying to figure it out. So it's definitely a tool. It's definitely a great tool. Um, and it allows even me for myself, like I know for a fact, somebody in Africa is playing my music. Because every time I look at my stats, I see like Africa and Asia, and there's not that many um, listen listeners, but it's like somebody listening to it over there. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's it, it, it's great. It's a great tool. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this: I'm not gonna say I'm jealous, but you know, you talk about growing up in in that era. <clears throat> you uh -huh. know, I come up in the the cassette then to CD era, so. I had my my first album came out on cassette tape and CD. Mm -hmm. So I, I was on CD. Uh, uh, yeah, you had to worry about the tapes. Mm -hmm. See, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So but I, <laughs> I do remember, but I do remember uh, back when 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 it was cool to record with the cassette on the on the on the boombox. 
Yeah, we, oh. I, could, I could talk. I could talk hours. I got stories for days as far as that's concerned. Oh. But uh, let me ask you this: What's one thing that people who think they know you best don't know about you? I'm. I'm gonna just say me. Like yeah. it's a lot of people who just really don't know me. Got you. Got you. Okay. Well, that's a perfect segue. That's that, that's that, you know, that's definitely the perfect segue, right? <laughs> so speaking of, you know, the journey, like I said, I, I'm just getting acclimated uh, to you and your ministry. Uh, you know, from what I found in 2020, I'm sorry, in, in 2020, uh, you dropped three singles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see Savvy, The mm-hmm. One, and Show Up. Mm-hmm. Dope. When I, when, I, when I first heard that, I was like, like, who this? You know, that, that kind of that kind of thing when my my brother Trig put me on. Um, I was like, oh, she got something here. And I noticed, you know, from 2020, there was a shift, and then I heard Buster this year. Mm-hmm. And I and, and I heard like there was a I'm not gonna say an an, 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 an aggression in your flow, mm-hmm. like in, in, a, in a good way. Like it's almost like there's a, there's an added confidence, it's an added um because I don't want to say cocky but it's like a surety. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you know who you are, like you, you're becoming, you know, cause sometimes when you get started, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a MC. I'm this, that, and the other. And yeah. you're, you're, you're like the emperor's new clothes. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying on these things. And it's like, it, it doesn't feel comfortable yet, but I'm getting there. And I, I felt like you started to kind of get your bearings. And by the time you got to know me, I'm just like, She's bonkers. Like that, that was, was, was crazy. So take me on, on the musical journey real quick. What was the inspiration behind those songs, you know, starting in 2020 up until your most recent release, as far as know me. I'm talking about, okay. So savvy. Let's talk about mm-hmm. savvy. Cause that okay. was, um, I remember I moved to Atlanta and this is crazy. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, I moved to Atlanta. I'm gonna tell the whole story too. We've been on here way longer than we said, but I moved. So good. I um, good I got in, I got invited invited to perform in Atlanta <clears throat> one weekend. Uh, actually, Easter Sunday, I think it or Saturday before Easter. I don't know. Sunday, I got invited to perform in Atlanta, and mm-hmm. um, I went to sleep on. Saturday morning, cause mm-hmm. I'm I'm a I was up all night. It was like maybe like uh four o'clock when I went to sleep Saturday morning, mm-hmm. and my my I told myself that I was gonna wake up. I'm gonna wake up around twelve, and then I'm gonna hit the road to go to Atlanta. Okay. When I woke up at eleven forty five, my house was on fire. Mm. While I was in the bed sleep. Mm. Um, I woke up choking, like, what's going on? And uh, I'm just choking, and I'm looking around, and I run downstairs, looked at the stove, went back upstairs, sat on the bed, looked around. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was sleeping. Wow. I was asleep, so I'm like, mm-hmm. but, but I couldn't breathe at the same time. So it was mm-hmm. like, so, what is this? And um, mm-hmm. um, the house was on fire. I still went to Atlanta that day. Which is crazy, Mm. but I still went. Um, When I got back, I was... God, I believe that God was trying to get me to move to Atlanta, but I was afraid because of my past. Because of the sexuality. You know what they say about Mm -hmm. Atlanta. So Mm -hmm. I was afraid. I'm like, nah, 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 I ain't ready. Mm -hmm. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. And when I woke up in that fire and I took that... what what was it like nine hour drive? I mm. kept hearing awaken by the fire, awaken mm. by the fire, awaken by the fire. And it's like, well, like, what do you want? Like, what do you <laughs> want from me, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Why are yeah. you doing this to me? Mm-hmm. So, um, so I ended up moving to Atlanta after I, I got went back to the DMV. Um, got packed all my stuff and dipped mm-hmm. out. Went to Atlanta, and I didn't do so well. The okay. the people who who like I was surrounding myself. I was serving out there. I was serving in Atlanta, and 
I didn't have a job. So I was doing like okay. Uber and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was struggling because I was still going to every show and I probably should have mm -hmm. been like trying to make some money. I was going to all these shows and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. um, I started struggling and I was like, man, how am I going to pay my rent this month? Mm -hmm. Um. And I had got I had got robbed and all kind of stuff at gunpoint. You don't know about Atlanta, man. Atlanta, mm -hmm. Atlanta, Atlanta broke me. Um, but anyway, so I was sitting in my car crying, listening to a beat, and I'm like, I knew the life that I have chose. I probably grow to hate. Cause you told mm -hmm. me in your word, if I shall love it, you take it away. And I got mm -hmm. joy, but I'm not happy crying mm -hmm. you picked mm -hmm. me up when i was mad deep mm -hmm. but all that pressure came in handy because having mm -hmm. less made me a savvy and i'm crying man i got joy but i'm not happy cry mm -hmm. like smart coming out loud. you picked me mm -hmm. up when i was mad deep but mm -hmm. all that pressure came in handy because having less made me a savvy and my thing goes off my my, my uber thing goes off Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ah, so I got, I'm sitting in my car crying, writing this song. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now I got to pick somebody up who's literally right around the corner. So mm -hmm. I'm like, at first I, I wasn't going to do it. I was going to ignore it. I was going to ignore it. But then like the spirit hit me. I was, I was about to hit ignore. And the spirit was like, I, this might sound like somebody will hear this and be like, the spirit ain't tell you that. But he was like, go get your money. Mm -hmm. you, you sitting here crying because your rent due. Do not dis, do not decline that ride. <laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever. Wipe my wipe my tears off. Mm -hmm. Wipe my nose. Mm -hmm. And I, I get around the corner. I actually hit a block. I hit an extra block because they was literally right there. Hit the block. Mm -hmm. Who gets in my car? Who? I said, hey man, he this dude, he this dude gets in my car, started clowning me. He starts clowning me off the rip. And I'm like, yo, you sound like Griff. And he was like, Griff who? And I was like, you know, Griff from Get Up Erica, where Erica Campbell, Griff. You don't know Griff? Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, sure, I don't know who that is. And I was like, oh, you sound like him. And I didn't even think twice about it. When he said it, I was like, oh, yeah, well. And he was like, nah, I'm playing as me, as me. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. I was like, I love you, That's Griff. Dope. Let me play my song for you. That's Let dope. me play this for you. And, the, <laughs> and he was like, he was like, first of all, I put the beat on. He stopped it. He said, don't, please don't play it. If it's trash, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mix it myself, so it's not, it's not that good, but like, please let me play it. And he was like, nah, nah, nah. But there was a guy in the back who was like, Griff, let her play her music. Let her play mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. so I cut it on and he's he gets he put when I when I turn it on, it gets, you know, into it. And he pulls out his phone. He's like, yo, Erica, yo, she fire. Mm -hmm. We gotta get her. Like, she is fire. And um, um, after that. I, I ran everything to him, like, bro, like I've been, I was just sitting here crying before I talked to you, and mm -hmm. he was like, um, you ain't, you ain't never gotta cry no more. Somebody gonna call you in like 15 minutes. I was like, cool, but um, mm -hmm. there was a point where he said, like, I hear the music you playing, but can you mm -hmm. really rap? Like, can you rap in real life? So I was like, cool, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Cut the beat on, put a little beat on, and was like driving and, and, and just rapping just rapping and they was like oh you going crazy that's it um, that's it so and that's where like savvy savvy came savvy came that day like that that song was birthed that day like i just i was going through it but you know god mm -hmm. you know he'll send he'll send people to Exactly. Check up on you. That's why in that song I said mm -hmm. in the in Buster in Buster I mm -hmm. said um, was laid on my bills. Mm, deliver the boss in the flesh, Griff. That's why I said that. But see, that's that's. For, thank you for saying that. But this is the the, the 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 dope part about the journey because that's why I said I, I noticed a shift and a transition in you, and you know I'm literally witnessing. In some cases, you know, it takes some artists, you know, a longer period of time to catch that shift, mm -hmm. you know, that that maturation process. So for you, 
to literally have that happen within basically a year's time is phenomenal to me because I think God, the way God works is so um, like his, his time is phenomenal. Like what may take us, you know, in our minds, five to 10 years, he can do it in an instant. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's the dope part about, you know, your journey. And and as we we talk about that, you know, going from uh, savvy, being Mm -hmm. in the car crying, that whole experience to know me. Mm-hmm. Now, I first of all, before we get get go, going with that, I need to know the story behind the annoyed date change uh, uh-huh. for the No Me vi- uh, music release, uh, uh, music video release. Like, what 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 happened to make you release it? You know, a day early as opposed to it coming out today. So, which so- uh, for those watching, it's available now. So go to you, our <laughs> YouTube page. We'll get to all that, and she'll let you so- know. I'm already the type of person like I'm like a what what they call like an ambivert. So it's like yeah. in, in between. I'm mm-hmm. a very cool, very energetic, very just like ah yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like I don't want to talk. I don't want to please don't look at me. I'm gotcha. that then I turn into that person and okay. um I notice that every time I release that is that is what the process is like. So I start out and it's like, yeah, I got some new music mm-hmm. coming, and then mm-hmm. I get tired of talking to people, and um, and that that off top, that's one thing. But then, mm-hmm. um, the song was supposed to drop today, but I somebody posted on their story and tagged me, and it was somebody that I wasn't even. They tagged me in their story, and they, you know how you post a story and you put the music on it. He put no me on the thing. And I was like, how is that there? Why is that there? And that was Wednesday when, mm-hmm. when he posted that. Or Wednesday when he posted that. I'm like, why is that even there? So I go to iTunes, type in no me. It's there. So at this point, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I had planned this thing out. And now I don't even know what to say to the people because mm-hmm. they can just go in and type it in and it's there. So, so, so basically, it dropped, it dropped early on, on the, uh, I guess the the platforms. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah, I've experienced that. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Definitely got to, uh, you know, when I saw the video, I definitely got to give a quick shout out to uh, one of the CHH queens, Butter P. You know, definitely got to give her props. I saw her in the video, um, and I'm definitely looking forward. Like, you may not say anything, but I'm definitely looking forward to some type of maybe collab between you two. I'm sorry, me and who? Butter P. Butter P. That's my dog. Okay, so so uh, we, we got any collabs coming? Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. You, you, know, I mean, you don't have to speak on it. If, you but if they up, got, you got some. Say it again. I say you breaking up. Okay, can you hear me now? Nah. You can't hear me now. No. Oh wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm about to say, yo, you got me. See, you can't do OG like that. You can't do OG like that. See, that is going to be end up being a meme. But anyway, you got some exclusive uh, crumbs you can uh, drop. I'm all for it. Yeah, I like really you got you got her. some. Like she is so, she is so, she's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna hit me with the humble. She's a good she's person. A good yeah. person. Yeah, but shout out, shout out to her. Uh, definitely very consistent. She's been just. Amazing, you know, as 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 far back as I can remember. So when I saw the two of you, I said, "Wait a minute." Hmm. It's crazy because when we were together, we was like, "Man, I wonder." I was like, "I wonder how many people gonna be like thinking something." And she was, we just laughed about that. It's not just you. I've been text people text me. I'm just saying, I'm in that. I'm in that group. So just know. It's, All right, so yeah, okay, I know. Okay, I got you. You can't say anything right now. That's okay. But I don't have thank, nothing, thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. I'm, I'm, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray about it then. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about your creative process. How do you mm-hmm. approach each you know song as far as determining if this is going to be a single or mm-hmm. this is something you just save for later? I think I love singles because. I th- I think if I can just put out singles, that'll be dope because I don't like it when people pick and choose. Okay. okay. I feel like if if I so if I have 10 songs, right? Mm-hmm. And to me they all mean something. They're all fire. It, the whole project is dope. 
they all mean something. But what people like to do is like, oh, I like this one. I like this one. I like that one. No, nah, you get this one, everybody likes it. Then you get this one, everybody likes it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I so, got you. So, yeah. So that's my thought on it. I just I'm just okay. doing singles or like small projects. Okay. So well, I, I tell you what. So as as that following builds mm -hmm. and it's it's like you know, you said you said 10, 10 million by 2021. Mm -hmm. Is it, that what you said? So if that's the case. And you have all these people oh, I, that are going to be clamoring. I got something ready. Okay, so now, okay, okay, so is it going to take the ten million for us to expect an EP or full length project? I should put that on y'all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should. That's the ne that's the next time. campaign, huh? Nobody's getting the album from me until I get ten million <laughs> followers. That's the next campaign. But but see and see, I don't think like Promotion. that because like to me, I'm not that serious. Nobody mm. take to me, nobody takes me that seriously. Mm. There's a few. Shout out to to my faithful few. Okay. There's okay. a few who actually take me seriously, but otherwise, it's just like it's just me and my little ten people. <laughs> so, if you say so. If you say so. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, where can we find you on social media? And where can your viewers go to see your music videos? Yes, you can find me everywhere at Reese Lachey. It's R-E-E-C-E-L-A-C-H-E. -E -E, everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm on Clubhouse too, y'all. If y'all got Clubhouse. Um, mm -hmm. Reese Lachey on Clubhouse. Um, if y'all want to get personal. <laughs> um, YouTube, Reese Lachey, just Reese Lachey, everything. Okay, I got you. Well, Reese, I will say this, and and I and I know per our conversation, I told you that we're gonna have a dope time, have have fun. Uh, they say time flies when you're having fun. Well, Reese, I ask you, did you have fun? Yes, we've been on here for an hour, and it was supposed to be thirty minutes, man. What happened? It got good. It was good. It got good. It, it good it's, it's, it's like it's like Netflix. Like, are you still there? Yeah, we're still I'm here. I'm coming back. It's, can I come back? Indeed. You know you can. You know you can. Yeah, and like, we're gonna make that. We'll make that happen. Definitely gotta make that happen. I got because it I definitely gotta, as you go forward, because you dropping videos and songs every week. So you know, I mean, it, I you have no choice. Back. I gotta get my. I gotta get my. I gotta do the thunder round, and I'm coming back better than ever. So. All right, before we close out, uh, if you can, uh, what is one message you would leave for those that support your ministry? Ooh, thank you so much. Thank you for believing in me. I love, like, I genuinely love the people who um, support and, you know, love what I'm doing because sometimes I don't believe in myself. Mm. Um, and they are always there to like tell me, you know, to help me believe in myself. Like, no, you're really dope. I love you. You know, and it's it, it, sometimes it's the simple things, but thank y'all so much. Thank, I'm just, you know, thank you. I love you for real. Exactly. So first of all, hey, I, I, I'll take it on the viewers that are watching. We, we love you right back. Uh, for all those that are watching, thank you for joining us for another kingdom building conversation where we put Christ on display through those serving him in the culture. Mm -hmm. We pray that this has been both entertaining, encouraging, but most importantly, enlightening as you get to grow closer to the hearts behind the songs and the videos. If you found value in it, share it with someone else. We look forward to seeing you all again. Until next time, sizzle out. Hey.